Hi all, today I am here with another fantastic technical topic and the topic is about pressure vessels. So in this video, I'll be able to clarify many of your doubts about the pressure vessels. So welcome you all to my channel Pemidaka and I'm Subhash Chandran with 17 years of experience in piping design. So before getting into the topic, let's introduce the course that I've launched in my website. The first course is about the pipe routing and the second course is about the pipe support design basically. These two courses will help you to enhance your knowledge in pipe design engineering so you'll be able to perform your interviews well actually. So if you want to know more details about this course you can visit my website it's pemidaka.com and slash course. Once you visit my website you'll be able to see the course tab and you will get all this all the details and you will find my contact number in the website and you'll be able to reach out to me. Uh, for any more clarification. So for now, let's get started. Let's get into the topic. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the most commonly used pressure vessels in oil and gas. Why this is necessary now? Because when you take uh, an industry like oil and gas or refineries and you will find a lot of equipments. So most piping design engineers who are at the intermediate uh, level have this doubts about what are the different types of vessels why there are so many vessels and what are the differences actually how do i memorize these vessels in terms of logically in order to answer during the interviews so this video will help you to understand the pressure vessels the major classification so that you can uh, answer any of uh, such questions about the types of pressure vessels confidently in the interviews okay so this video refers only the functional name of the vessels because as I said once I uh, take you through the uh, presentations you will be able to understand what I'm talking about but however we have to remember this in mind the common types of vessels are named differently in different process plans based on the type of process that is what I have written it over here so uh, I will I will explain this in details when I go to the slide but just remember that the in this video we are going to talk morely about the functional types not the type of the process because the names of the vessels changes with respect to the types of the process. Let's start with drums first actually. So this is the internals of the drum. The drum generally looks like this. It will have an inlet nozzle and it will have a vapor outlet and it will have a liquid outlet. It will have a level instruments and the maintenance axis. These are the common nozzles and this is how the internals of the drum look like. So how it looks like in the exterior actually. This is how it looks like. See the picture that you are uh, that I'm showing on the screen is a big sized drums which could be named in different forms with respect to different process condition. But as far as mechanical engineering or piping design is concerned this is drums okay whether it is a big or small this is drums but here the approximate length of this particular drum is nearly about 20 meters you can imagine the when the drum size is nearly about 20 meter and the volume of the space that it is going to consume in your layout and the uh, complication of the piping that uh, that you have to do for this particular drum because of the height and the length and the foundation size of this equipment will be more so that it, it will also occupy a lot of space uh, in terms of uh, layout preparations okay now let's go to the medium size drum medium size drums generally varies from uh, 5 meter to 10 meters and uh, these um, drums are also functionally same as common drums functional as I've shown in the internals basically. But however, the with respect to different process conditions and these are named differently in the different plans basically. And the another one is knockout drums. Knockout drums are the drums that we generally uh, are able to um, uh, what do you call experience during our in most of the projects because these are the drums that are commonly used in uh, steam outs and condensates and uh, uh, the flare knockout drums and these are the common knockout drums actually. So the height generally varies from uh, like a 3 meter to 6 meter. So these are very uh, medium sized drums and we could say actually. Now let's go to the filters. So what are filters actually? I'll show you three different pictures. These are the three different pictures. So the if you see uh, though the filters uh, the functionality is same but the arrangement is different. Here we have a drain at the bottom. Here we don't have drain at the bottom. We have a drain at the side actually. But here we have the drain at the bottom but the nozzles are at the bottom. So there are different configurations but functionally filters are considered to be pressure vessels. So remember, remember that. Maybe the size varies. The kind of a size that you're seeing on the photos maybe differ uh, from the process plan to process plan. 
it could be small it could be big but however filters are considered to be the pressure vessels because uh, it has to be stamped with asme pressure vessel code so that is what uh, the in very intent that you have to remember in your mind actually now let's go to the columns section so columns we have different types of column but generally what we refer is the distillation column is because that's the father of all columns because the distillation column height is nearly around 50 meter and you can see this is uh, the few of the columns which are uh, the tallest in any of the process plants because these has got uh, what are the set of different uh, trays at different levels which has got a different process to do with basically uh, since the height of the column is too high the complication of the piping and accessibility and in the installation of the supports everything becomes complex in this process but however column is considered to be the very critical uh, pressure vessel so if you see pressure vessels the column is one of the type that belongs to the pressure vessels okay so now let's see the smaller type pressure vessels in column category which is known to be an absorber you can find that in many of the process plant you can see a column like absorbers and regenerators but however these are considered to be a columns and it will have a lot of trays inside so maybe the dimensions and the orientation of the trays may be different but functionally the column works similar to uh, the the all the columns because that is the process of the columns because the vapor that travels from the bottom of the column to the top and the liquid that travels from top to the bottom that has an inherent absorption and regenerations basically so this is an other type of a column where the height of the column may be lesser than the previous column that i have said could be around 30 meters so that is what i have shown over here so functionally if you see columns columns are considered to be the tallest equipment it varies from 50 meter to 30 meter and even you can find columns which are around 10 meters now let's go to the reactors actually so reactors when we say uh, the reactors is also a type of a column uh, but it is a most uh, uh, critical equipment because uh, the the reactor has uh, the reactions which is there are various types of reactions which are termed in chemical process uh, industries basically so reactors it the functionality of the reactor is that it will have a certain catalyst and kind of an uh, the region where you will have this uh, reactions takes place efficiently and uh, there will be uh, the in what you call the provision for the inlet and the provision for the the, the to dispose uh, the existing the catalysts which are actually put into the reactors actually reactor generally looks like this actually there are different sized reactors and the i mean the overall uh, the reactor actually appears to be like this but uh, there are cases where uh, the the dimensions and the sizes varies with respect to the process condition but as far as reactors are considered to be these are also a pressure vessels so and it has got certain activities to do instead of a different uh, trace kind of things likes in uh, columns reactors has uh, the whole big uh, the space inside where the chemical process happens with respect to the uh, the kind of uh, process uh, set within the reactors actually uh, so this is an another type of a pressure vessel now let's go to the most common another type of exchange i mean the pressure vessel which is known to be heat exchangers the first let's talk about the shell and tube exchangers because shell and tube exchangers are the very commonly used exchangers in any process plant so the moment you understand this and you will be able to understand every other heat exchangers it is just as simple as that you get the inlet and the the, the fluid which passes through different um, the baffle plates and where the tubes are uh, fitted actually so and then it goes all out here actually and you can see in an, another inlet where the other uh, stream of fluid that comes in and uh, takes the cold or hot um, uh, the temperature which is coming through this Um, uh, I mean this uh, stream of uh, fluid. So the heat exchangers are basically uh, an equipment which transforms uh, heat from one location to I mean one stream of fluid fluid to an other stream basically. Kettle type heat exchangers. This looks like this. Functionally, it works similar to the uh, shell and tube heat exchangers, but uh, as far as the appearance and the the structure wise, it's uh, it looks like this actually because this is uh, required for very specific kind of process. So this is another type of heat exchanger, but this falls under pressure vessel category. That is why I wanted to highlight over here actually. So now we are done with this video, but to understand the intent of this video, you have to remember this. we have different types of pressure vessels in any of the oil and gas or process plants or refineries but however these equipments are classified into one functional type actually though the names of the equipments are different it could be an absorber it could be a regenerator but both are falls under 
column category both are falls under pressure vessel category so you don't have to confuse you can find a filters a big size filters or a small size filters but still these filters are known to be the pressure vessels so you can see at tanks but those are considered to be the pressure vessels you can see at drums actually drums could be used as a mini tanks so the functionally the piping design engineers has to remember that there are only few set of pressure vessels but the names of the pressure vessels could be different with respect to different process condition so by this i am ending this video actually thank you so much for watching my video and if you are interested in the contents that i am putting please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the like button so that it will motivate me to make more and more such videos in future thank you so much